So we've looked in previous lessons about what would make up a place's identity and how the complex factors intertwine to make something a place. We're going to look at an actual example of Toxteff in Liverpool and we're going to look at the um, different criteria that have made it the unique place it is today. This is part of um, the 1A of the OCR A-level course. Uh, you have to look at two contrasting places at a local scale, everything from demographics through to natural characteristics. And uh, Toxteff is going to be one of our case studies. Before we look into more details about the case study, here's some um, geolocating. This is where Toxteff is. It's in the northwest of the country um, and it is in the city of Liverpool. Um, here on the banks of the River Mersey. As you can see, uh, it's now an, an inner city um, area. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how that has changed over there time. Are many different aspects we can look at in terms of place profile. I'm going to start off by looking at the natural uh, characteristics, the past characteristics, and the built environment of Toxteff. So as I said before, Toxteff is on the banks of the River Mersey. So this is a natural um, characteristic. Um, it is uh, next to a really big river. So in terms of initially um, when it was set up, uh, this position meant that it was really good for, for fishing because it was really good access to the river and um, the ocean. So Saxons initially chose it as a location in the 11th century, set up some small villages because they could fish from there. This location on the banks of the River Mersey also later would make it um, a really good location for a port, which became very successful um, from the 18th century onwards. However, Toxteff wasn't just a fishing area, it kind of went through uh, different stages. So in the 11th century, it was for fishing and, and the Saxons um, set it up, but it also had undulating land. So if you can see in this right picture, kind of green land that's going up and down. And it was a perfect kind of location, partly wooded, partly not wooded for, for hunting. So it was a, um, a hunting park for deer. Uh, called Toxteff Park in the 13th century, where the king, um, King John at the time, would go hunting. So, again, the natural characteristics, the kind of part woodland, part open area, um, made it a perfect location um, for, for deer hunting, and that was kind of what made it, um, it's part of its identity. Later on, other natu natural characteristics kind of changed it also. It's got a stream running through it in Toxteff, and um, this stream made that, you know, it was an ideal location for farming because you could use it to irrigate. And then when they could actually channel the power of that steam, which they were able to do in the 16th century, that means they could get water power from it. So that means they could get these kind of small cottage industries. So we can see that early on, the natural characteristics had quite an important uh, influence on kind of what went on there, whether it was fishing, a deer park, or later farming and water power. As I said before, the location on this west coast, so this physical location of where it was, um, made it a kind of an ideal stopping point um, for slave trade. So Liverpool became very famous for the slave trade in the kind of 18th century and slightly beyond. And because it was a, a stop off point before slaves were taken to America, um, the, its location a uh, physical natural location meant that it was a place that led on to future changes um, in Liverpool. As that port grew in the 18th and 19th century, it wasn't just slaves, it was also as a place for Scandinavian timber. This led to uh, an increase in wealth. And when we see an increase in wealth, we get a change not only in the demography, so the kind of people and the structure of the population, but also the built environment. And I'm going to talk about demography a little bit later, um, but we're going to talk a little bit more about the built environment. So because a lot of money got pumped into the city for these, um, it was very lucrative, the slave trade, um, you got these large Georgian houses and later kind of some Victoria, Victorian era kind of grand houses being built 
very um, like this, an area called the Georgia and um, Georgian Quarter. And this was where rich slave merchants and industrialists would have lived. Um, so Toxteff became went from this place being a, a kind of rural deer park to suddenly being a place where people would build these nice, huge houses and, and very rich, wealthy people in this kind of 18th, 19th century would have lived. Um, it was also kind of an area that was for the middle class. So as time went on, um, it, more and more kind of houses were built. But it's still, if you look in this area here, it's very low density. You can see lots of open space. And so middle class people would have built houses here. It was considered kind of a greenfield site, rural, urban fringe. So on the edges of the city, so you could have space, you could have a nice house. People could commute in. Um, again, we're not talking about on trains really here. This is kind of small time commuting, but still the slightly wealthier middle class and upper class would live in this area and then move into the city. But obviously, as things change, um, Growth and industrialization happens in Liverpool. The port becomes successful, but also as an industrial place for manufacturing, Liverpool uh, became very important. And that obviously led to changes in the built environment. So as we can see here, that last uh, map was only kind of the, at the start of the, kind of the 19th century, kind of 1830s. This is only 30 or 40 years later, and we have got huge amounts of terrace housing. So um, the docks and those manufacturing places grew up so quickly that they had to knock up cheap terrace housing to fill the demand for all that labour and all the kind of migrants that were coming in to kind of get those jobs. And these were obviously very poor conditions. So it suddenly went from an area of middle class to being an area kind of full of um, poor um, and often um, you know, poor workers that were working in the dock um, and an area which would have gone from being quite nice and low density to very high density housing, which would have um, often be the, the source of uh, disease being spread quite quickly because the houses are literally packed in really close to each other. So within the space of 150 years, we've gone from it being um, you know, a kind of a deer park, uh, an area of kind of rural farming to um, a place where the middle class would have le lived on the rural urban fringe to now being an inner city suburb. This is kind of mass industrialization, huge growth. So those are just the natural and past characteristics and how they've affected the built environment. And we can see that these connections aren't just local. We're talking about global and international connections. So the slave trade connected Liverpool um, outside the UK and changes in the UK would have also led to this. We're going to talk a little bit more about demography and kind of present changes uh, in a future video, but this is just a good place to start in terms of how the natural environment um, led to kind of changes in the, in the built environment and what actually was going on in Toxteff.